What's up guys, I'm Paul's Build and welcome back to our Ethical Zoo franchise mode series in Planet Zoo. In the previous video, we expanded the Africa section of our zoo by making a huge safari habitat that housed four different African species. And in this video, we're going to expand that habitat by adding in another four species, meaning that eight different African species are going to be living in the same habitat. And it seems like our mixed habitat is going quite well. We've got our buffalo and our rhino here, kind of just chilling out together. And then I think most of the wildebeest, yeah, we've got more buffalo over here. And then I believe most of the wildebeest are kind of on the other side. Yeah, there's like a massive herd over here. Okay, so the, the wildebeest have found their spot. This is their side of the rock. <laughs> so they're chilling over here. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves, but I don't want to leave them as they are. We want to add more animals. And the next animal we want to get into this habitat is the common ostrich. Now, these guys are a least concerned species. And that means that we're probably not going to breed them in the zoo because it's not really necessary. So let's have a look at the species data and see whether we want a group of males or a group of females. Oh, it looks like it's only two of each. That's interesting. So maybe we should go for two, but the bigger two out of them, which looks to be the males. The males seem to be taller. And that's interesting because I'm pretty sure in emus, the uh, the females are the big ones. So it must be the reverse in ostrich. That's interesting. And the life expectancy, crucially, is 46 years. So when we're looking for them, we want to make sure that they are younger than 46. <laughs> Let's have a look in our animal trading tab and see who is available. If we filter these guys by appeal, there's a good female here. There's there's a few of each. I'm kind of tempted to go for the males, though, just because there's um, we only need two anyway. These are quite young, considering they live to 46, and they are going to be bigger than the female. So it's a bit easier for our guests to see them. Let's grab the two males, and we'll move them into quarantine. Now, I believe this quarantine is closer over here, so let's put them in this quarantine. And then we don't want to just get them. We also want to have a look at getting another animal in here at the same time. And that is going to be the sable antelope. This is another least concerned species. So again, we're not going to focus on breeding them, but we do want to get either a female or male bachelor group. And it looks like, oh, wow, there's one to 11 females or one to six males. That's quite a lot of males that can live together. That's interesting. They're pretty much the same size. The males are slightly taller and they live to 20. So nowhere near as long as the ostrich. They live to 20. Let's see who we've got available. And that might decide whether we go for all male or all female group. If we sort them by appeal, let's have a look. We've got ooh, a few. Actually, let's sort them by sex and see who we've got more of. There's a lot of males here, but I think they may be related, but that's okay. And there's quite a few females too. There seems to be more males. I'm wondering whether we just go for six males. Seeing as there's so many males, I think we'll just get six males. Okay, we've got our six males here. Let's send them to the zoo. And we want to put them in probably the same quarantine building that's a little bit closer. So just down here. And these guys should go through quarantine. Now, it seems like our ostrich are passing quarantine, which is great. So they haven't got any illnesses or injuries. That's why I'm putting them here. It's just to check them before we put them into the habitat. So we don't release someone in with a, a sickness or something. And then we end up infecting everyone already living there. Now, both of these guys are done. Let's move them into the habitat. And we're going to have to change this habitat's name again to be rhino, buffalo, wildebeest, ostrich and antelope that is getting crazy <laughs> and it looks like it started to rain but our ostrich are arriving so they're arriving in a bit of a storm look at them they're huge aren't they when they're stood next to a human you can really see they're massive and here they are does anyone want to move or are you just gonna clip together as one ostrich <laughs> They should become friends, the two of them. This two-headed ostrich that we have. I don't know why they're not moving. Oh, here we go. They're leaving now. They're deciding to part ways. And they've officially become two different ostrich. One of them has just absolutely legged it. <laughs> here they are. They're very cool. I like them a lot. It's a shame that we can't have more in a group size than two. But it, it was one to two for males and one to two for females as well. Where did that ostrich go? Oh my goodness, they really run, don't they? 
Is this ostrich like all the way over here already? How did you get all the way over here? My goodness, they're quick. Okay, all of our antelope have passed quarantine as well. So let's move them into this habitat too. Now I want to check that the environment is good for the ostrich. So let's look at terrain. They're actually happy with exactly how it is. That is perfect. And they have enough hard shelter. I'm wondering whether we're going to need more at some point, but let's see how we go in this habitat. And environment wise, they're happy with the amount of plants and trees that were here already. So tempted to leave them as well. Doesn't look like we need much else. And in Richmond, they don't have enough food in Richmond. Right, let's have a look in our habitat tab. If we filter by species common ostrich, we should be able to find everything that's related to just them. So this is all the stuff that they want only. And you can see there's quite a lot of stuff we're missing. So I'm just going to go through and add in a few of the bits that we're missing. I'll probably put the feeders by the, uh, the windows so that guests can see them quite well. Okay, that is looking good for them now. They have plenty of enrichment and look at the interspecies bonus they're getting. They're getting an 80% interspecies bonus and that is because they uh, are another animal. Well, all of the animals we're putting in here have a bonus with one another. So this is the sable antelope. They want to be in here with a common ostrich. And these guys, if we look at interspecies enrichment, they want to be with the African buffalo, the black wildebeest, the blue wildebeest and the southern white rhino, so as well as the sable antelope. So they're gonna be at 100% when the antelope arrive, which is awesome. And it looks like our antelope are arriving as we speak. There's someone running through. So hopefully we can get that 100% enrichment and that's for everyone, like everyone shares all of these bonuses, which is I think the biggest interspecies bonus we've had in this zoo so far, 100%. <laughs> they should be really happy. Oh, I'm going to pause because we have a redneck wallaby about to inbreed. So before we unveil like the suspense <laughs> of the sable antelope, let's just sort these guys out because we don't want that happening. I'm going to say that the younger one is probably... Are they siblings? Oh, they've got a lot of siblings in here. It's a bit messed up, I think, this, this habitat. I'm going to release this female. I think these guys have multiple siblings in here yeah okay we may need to go through and just have a quick look at who's in here because i think a lot of them are related which is definitely not good when they're breeding okay oh especially the younger ones yeah i think this is the issue there's some younger ones here uh, and this one but this one is offspring jew okay well that's not good well presumably they may have bred with someone else actually that's okay but they do have a brother in here so that's not what we want. And then are you related to anyone, the other male? No. But your parent is in there. Okay, well, that's not good. Right. <laughs> I don't like the look of this. I think, really, we just need to get rid of the males. We need to release all the males and then uh, get some new males in here. That's probably the easiest solution. What group size do the uh, redneck wallabies live in? That's the real question. Redneck wallaby. They live in... Oh, wow. Massive group size. Okay, so that's a decent amount of females. Where's the male? It says there's one male. Oh, is it the baby? Yeah, I think that's the baby. Okay. Um, if we go to animal trading, let's have a look at redneck wallabies. And let's see if we can get some new males in here because that's going to help us out. It looks like there's three. Let's just get all three of these males. There we go. And then we'll send them to the zoo. Let's put them through quarantine. They can go through this quarantine. And this is way closer to them than the African animals quarantine. So that's fine. We just put them in there. And we can get rid of that alert. That's fine. Cool. Right. Let's have a look at our antelope entering the zoo. Oh, look at these guys. They're really cool. Let's go on camera. Look at those faces. It's like really, um, like really stark contrast between. They're just, just black and white. Kind of love them. They're really cool. And straight away playing with the uh, food enrichment. So they clearly like it in here. How, what do they think about the terrain? There's, there's, oh, okay. There's not enough short grass for them. They need more short grass. This is going to be a bit of an art. So I'm going to go through with the short grass. Add a little bit more short grass. 
and then we're gonna have to check all the other animals that they're okay with it. And we've got a Vison about to inbreed, which I think just means the young one has grown up. Yeah, let's release them into the wild. Stop trying to breed with Olaf. I know everyone wants to breed with Olaf because look at him, but you can't, it's not allowed. Okay, that works with everyone in the habitat. So we've now fixed the terrain. Every these guys are happy along with everyone else. And it looks like they actually have all the enrichment they want. Let's check out what they want um, that we may not have. See if there's anything in there. Because they do say that they're happy. But I just want to make sure they're as happy as possible. So sable antelope. Yeah, no, honestly, we have lots of these things already. All of these we already have, so... There may be things we haven't unlocked through research, but what we have available, we have everything. Oh, and this needs... Where is the mechanic? Seems like our mechanics are a little bit too busy. Um, let me check our staff tab. Because there isn't even a mechanic on the way. Okay, and our keepers in Africa are super busy as well. I'm going to hire another keeper. And if we go work zones, I'm going to put a third keeper just on this habitat because I think we're going to need them. And then I'm going to hire another keeper for Africa generally. So the Africa section of our zoo has one more keeper. Who else do we need? Our Europe area. Maybe they just need training up. Let's train up everyone. And see if that helps us out. And then... We need another educator in the Asia section of our zoo. I put them, they're gonna have to walk, <laughs> but that's fine. Let's put them in the Asia section. And then everyone else actually seems fine. If anything, we have too many vendors. So I'm gonna leave them for now and just check that that is actually the case. Or maybe I'll move a couple of people over. No, because we've got some with low workload and some with high workload. So I think they just need to be better at their jobs. And tra oh no, that was fully trained up. They're both fully trained up. They need to organize themselves better, but I think this is okay. And the mechanics say that they're running an efficient workload, so maybe they just, uh, they're on their way. They, they're okay. It's just they're going to get around to this soon. I can only assume. Because this isn't okay. Looks like our quokka are past quarantine too, so let's move those males into the habitat and let the breeding commence. And it's feeding time. Look at these guys. Oh, I love it. They're all sharing the feeders. Maybe we need some more feeders. I'm going to put in some more uh, food and water. Let's get some more large food troughs and put some throughout. Oh, no, we've got some empty ones. I think everyone's okay. Actually, yeah, there's loads of empty ones. I think they're okay. They're just kind of crowding around the ones that have been filled up. But the keeper will go around and fill them all up. So that there's definitely enough food for everyone. They just all want to be first. Something we haven't done is updated our education and added donation bins around the whole habitat. So we do need to do that to make sure we can bring in good money for this habitat and teach our guests about the animals, especially those that are endangered and need our help. So I'm just going to go through and update all the education around the habitat to include all the species that we've put in. There we go, just added in loads of donations and education. Should be bringing in a lot more money for us now. I do want to check up on our finances because I don't know how we're doing. Yeah, we started to lose money. <laughs> and that's probably because we need to put our ticket prices up again. I'm going to put this to 70, uh, 78 and make this half of that, which is 39. And then see what our guests are going to think of it as well. Because I think they think the ticket price is fine. They've got umbrellas. We're selling umbrellas like everywhere. So it should be fine. And that should bring in a lot more money. As well as obviously the donation bins we just put down. That will bring in loads more money. So hopefully that helps us out a little bit. 
Uh, we do, unfortunately, on the other side, need to check up on our animals' food and make sure that everyone has grade 3 food quality where we can, where we've done the research for them, and then check up on our research. <laughs> so we are trying to research all of our animals to 100% which obviously is a very good thing to do. Oh, see, so we've got grade two food quality now for the hippos. And I want to check in with the progress on our animal education. But it seems like a lot of people have unlocked grade three food quality. So I do want to give that to them because this is a, an ethical zoo after all. And we have to give them all the stuff we can. Let's have a look at our vet research and see how far they've got. Uh, they're, they're carrying on. Well, uh, we'll leave them to keep researching and doing their thing. It may be also that we need to let go some of our staff now. Like some of our vendors seem a little unnecessary. Where we've got low efficiency workload, I think if we've got loads of that, we just need to start letting people go. I think a few of the vendors are definitely in this boat, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna fire these. I've left in a lot that still say that they're not, uh, that they're, they're, they're still fine, but that's a lot of staff that we have here that seem to be excess. I'm slightly worried that it's too many, so I'm going to reduce some of these because I don't want to do like an insane layoff process that we then regret, especially when these guys are all trained up. But maybe 23. Let's fire these 23 because that is insane if we don't need them. And that will massively bring down our staff costs. If Ozu can keep running without all of them, I think I maybe overhired all the vendors. Because <laughs> if everyone's on low efficiency workload, then that's really not good. Like, they're, they're don't, not needed, basically. And the main cost for Ozu should be the animals, not a bunch of vendors that we don't really need, just like sitting around all day. <laughs> now our new animals seem to be settling in, let's learn a little bit more about them. The common ostrich, or Struthio camelus, is the largest known bird species in the world. Males have black body feathers and white feathers on their wingtips and tails, while the females have grey-brown body feathers. As well as being the largest living species of bird, the ostrich is also the fastest bird on the ground. They can run for long distances at 34 miles per hour and sprint at 43 miles an hour. Ostriches also have the largest eggs in the world, but the smallest eggs of any bird relative to their body size, which is so interesting. When incubating a nest, the alpha female sits on the nest during the day, her grey-brown feathers blending with the dusty ground, and the alpha male sits on the nest at night, with his black feathers difficult to see in the dark. So they do a really good job of camouflaging the nest. The ostrich males also raise the ostrich chicks when they hatch. Contrary to popular belief, ostriches do not bury their heads in the sand. To hide from predators, they lie flat against the ground and their body blends with the horizon and the dust. So they do do something, but it's definitely not burying their heads in the ground. Thankfully, as well as being widespread across the African continent, although not in the deserts or rainforests, the common ostrich has become common worldwide, often farmed for its meat, eggs, and feathers. However, although it's not currently endangered, the species range is becoming restricted, with subspecies of ostrich declining in number due to human population growth and land use change. So we just need to keep one eye on the ostrich for the future. The sable antelope is a species of ungulate that lives in southeastern Africa. They have long notched horns that curve backwards from their face, and a tan to black coat with a white underbelly, chin and throat, as well as white tear marks on their face. In sable antelope herds, the females have strong hierarchies within the herd, and the alpha female is the strongest, healthiest individual. They are also hostile towards new female group members, so it's a very in-group, out-group situation. In the wild, sable antelope chew bones to gain minerals from them. And the sable antelope get darker as they get older. The darkness of their coat often indicates seniority of group members, with alpha females and males being dark brown to black in colour. Young males will often play fight as practice, and older males will challenge each other by butting heads and pushing each other with their horns. But fights rarely become violent. Sable antelopes do not flee from predators, but stand their ground, often attacking with their horns, and they've even been known to kill 
lions. So do not mess with the sable antelope. Thankfully, the sable antelope is not endangered and is seen in large numbers throughout its range. However, the amount of space available to them has declined. Their natural habitat has been reduced by mankind's urban expansion, which has destroyed grazing lands and turned large areas of savannah into farmland. Additionally, sable antelope are hunted for their distinctive horns, not to mention vulnerable to diseases spread by the tsetse fly. So the sable antelope is doing well, but they have quite a lot of things working against them right now. The sunsets in the zoo are so beautiful as well. The lighting of the game is actually one of my favorite things. <laughs> it just looks so nice. Look at it. And unfortunately, we've had a couple of deaths. Midnight the European Badger has just died, and so has Danny the little penguin. I'm gonna call the vet for both of them. It looks like Midnight was already being collected, but Danny will have a vet coming very shortly. And I'm realizing, I think that's a sunrise, not a sunset. It's hard to get your bearings on where East and West is <laughs> in the park. But speaking of sunrise and sunsets, we don't have any lights in the Africa section of the zoo. We put some along here, but that's about it. So they kind of just stop. And I think we should probably put some more benching in too, because we don't have a lot of benching. So I'm going to go through and make sure that all of the Africa section has benches, bins, and lights so that it's not just like left. Because <laughs> the rest of the zoo is much better catered for. And these are the two types of African bench. Now, the bins we're using are these, but I think they go with either bench. And I think this is the one that's supposed to match the one on the left, and this is the one that's supposed to match the one on the right. But I actually really like the uh, the bench on the left, so I think I'm going to put them around. So I'm going to update all of the benching bins and lights now. Okay, we've just added in a lot of benches and lights and I th I've had a look and it seems like there's quite a lot of crime going on. So I'm going to go to facilities. That's not where it is. Where is it? In the zoo overview, there's crime. I'm going to replace everything that's been broken. And that should be all our bins and everything nice and new. I'm going to make this 80 as well and just straight 80, 40 because I feel like that's reasonable. I don't know what everyone's thinking about it, but no one's complaining still, so... I'm I'm tempted to just keep putting it up. I'll tell you what, let's do 86 and 43. 
and let's see how people feel about it. You can also see our profit is not as bad as it was before. Okay, many guests think tickets are overpriced. Let's make this 80 again. 80 and 40, maybe that's about right. And see how they think about that. Um, but I think maybe we can afford to stop with one of our uh, marketing campaigns. I'm gonna stop the TV commercials because I don't think we actually need it. We're getting quite a reasonable amount of marketing anyway. Our marketing's just dropped. Maybe we did need it. Okay, I'm gonna start another one, begin marketing. If I stop the other one, that's still five stars. Okay, so we've just got the one marketing campaign going and that's literally fine for us. We're still hitting five stars on marketing, so we don't need to worry about that. Just trying to cut costs where we don't actually need them to, uh, to hopefully go back into the green soon because it's not ideal. We're close. It's just our expenses are slightly more than what we bring in. And most of that is coming from our staff. So I'm just wondering how much of our staff we need. It seems like a lot of people are still yellow after we just fired about a million vendors. I can't believe we have so many vendors. <laughs> That's part of it. I'm slightly in disbelief about it. I'm also thinking, let's just close our souvenir shop. Seeing as it doesn't actually work and we're not making anything from it. Let's just uh, close the shop. And then we'll we'll fire everyone that was assigned to that work zone. And we can see how that goes. Because that will help us out as well. Oh no, Anne's died. The wild boar. Let's uh, call the vet and have them take her away. And then I think we should get some more animals in here. So, the next animal I want to add in is the Nyala. And I don't actually know how to pronounce that, but I think it's Nyala. And these are adorable animals. They're a least concerned species. So again, we're not going to be breeding them. And they live in groups of one to five. So I think we've got to go for a female group here so we can get five of them rather than the males where it would just be one. <laughs> Which seems a bit ridiculous at a habitat this big. So let's have a look at who we have. And it seems we've got quite a few females that we can get. Now, I didn't check how long they live. Let's look on species data. They live to 16. Okay, perfect. In that case, let's grab all of these because these seem a good age. They're quite young. And there's actually even more Nyala on the market now. So let's grab this female here and this one. And I think that takes us to six, which is the group size. Oh no, it was one to five. Oh, okay. So we're gonna have to release one of these into the wild or sell them back actually. So let's just sort them by appeal. And then the least appealing one, that doesn't seem like the least appealing one. Some of them have red. Uh, let's go for this one, actually. We're going to trade this one back to another zoo. And then we have five Nayala that can go into the habitat. So I'm going to send them to quarantine. Let's send them to this quarantine up here. And they can be scheduled for delivery. And now let's get another species, which will mean that eight species live in this habitat. That's crazy. Um, let's look at who we're getting next. It's the plain zebra. And these guys are near threatened. So we are going to be breeding them because we want their population to boost their numbers. So if we have a look at the species data, they live in groups of one male and up to five females. Let's have a look at what's available on the market. Wow, it seems like there's quite a lot of them. Let's sort them by appeal. Oh, and we need to look at the Zoopedia to see how long they live. I always forget that. They live to 25. Okay, 25 is what we're looking at. Now, there's a few here. I don't like it when they have zero and stuff, but they're not too bad. And there are five females right here. So I think we're just going to adopt all of them because they have a safe home with us anyway. And then we will send all of these zebras into the quarantine that's closer over here. And it looks like all of our Nyala have passed quarantine. So let's move them into the habitat. And it seems like our zebras are doing the same. Oh no, one of our meerkats has died. Let's call the vet. Dolly, bless you, you will be missed. And all the babies are around. Please say they're not their babies. I can't, I can't deal with that if that is the case. <laughs> That's too sad. It's like a full on Lion King situation. And it looks like all of our zebra have also passed quarantine. So let's move them in. Or at least the five girls have. I don't think the male has entered the habitat yet. And our Nyala are arriving. Look at them. Oh my goodness. These guys are adorable. Look at them. They like barely go above the grass line. That's so cute. Now these guys are happy with terrain. That's really good. Do they have enough enrichment? They do. They're 100%. Okay, perfect. And unfortunately, Maple has died right next to the food, so that can't be sanitary. Uh, but they're pigs, I guess. They're probably 
they probably have the stomach for it. And I think we've got our zebra arriving now. Let's see them. Look at them! Oh my goodness! The zebra are so beautiful, aren't they? What a beautiful animal. They are adorable. And they are also happy with the terrain. So we just need to look at the enrichment for these guys and see what we can get. And it seems like 100% is the maximum you can get from having them together. <laughs> Which makes sense. They have a 100% bonus from interspecies. Uh, let's have a look in the uh, habitat tab and see if there's any enrichment that we're missing for any of them. It looks like the Nyala's ones are already in here, and I imagine the plain zebra is going to be the same situation. Yeah, the plain zebra ones, we've got loads of these already, so we don't actually need to add any more enrichment in, because it seems like the numbers are fine, otherwise they tell us that they're not fully, like, fulfilled by it. Now, we've had our five female zebra go in. I don't think I did buy a male zebra, although I did mean to. So let's have a look for plain zebra and find a nice male. We've got a few here available. I might get this one, I think, for 2,000. It's a little bit cheaper. And let's send them to the zoo. Now they can go to the quarantine here, and then we'll put them into the zoo after and they can start breeding. Oh my goodness, what a storm. This is crazy. Good news is as well, I think our finances are starting to balance out. It looks like we're kind of getting even on our profit or maybe slightly going down but it's not too bad <laughs> which is a bit of a relief we can keep uh looking at it though and maybe we need to put in some more profit making things but you can see we just went into profit then so it, it's very playing with the line so hopefully that will kind of sort itself out and if not you know i'm hoping our donations are going to go up as we keep educating our guests and adding new animals for them to look at so let, let's see how it goes I'm going to move the male zebra into the habitat because he's past quarantine now. And then we can have a look at him. Okay, here he comes, our male zebra. Oh, look at him. What a beautiful boy. Oh, and he's immediately running away. <laughs> what a beautiful animal, though. Oh, I love them. They may be my favorite in the zoo, actually. I do love zebras. And look at them with the ostrich. Just come say hello. Now he's going to go find his herd. All the females have already moved into the habitat. You're not going to find them in there. He's immediately going to bed. They're, I think they're further in. You're going to have to go find them, mate. I'm sorry about that. I realize I also haven't done any checks that the animals can't escape the habitat. So I'm just going to quickly check that out now. Okay, so the ostrich can't escape. That's good. The zebra can't escape. That's good. The antelope can't escape. And the Nyala can't escape. Okay, cool. No one can escape. That's what we like. Everyone's contained within the habitat. And now our plain zebra is just chilling, walking around. He's not even interested in finding the females. I think he's pretty settled. Let's learn a little bit more about our animals. The Nyala is a secretive antelope that lives in the thick undergrowth of the southeastern African savanna. Unlike many antelope species, Nyala are extremely reliant on water and need to drink daily. They always live near a water source, so it's a good thing we put a huge lake in for these guys. Nayala produce a dog-like bark to alert other group members of danger. Nayala males are called bulls, and Nayala females are called ewes. This is because of the large size difference between sexes in this species. The terms bull and doe are used for large antelope species, and ram and ewe for small antelope species. Male and female Nyala fit into two different categories because of the size difference. Nyala are crepuscular animals, which means they forage during dusk and dawn, and they rest and sleep during the heat of the day. They also have excellent hearing and will listen for warning calls of baboons and impala to remain aware of threats, which is awesome that they can listen to the warning calls of other species and know what that means. Thankfully, the species is not endangered, but numbers are decreasing and populations are threatened by human expansion. Their habitat is decreasing in size as land is changed to urban areas or farmland. The Nayala are also vulnerable to diseases spread by domestic livestock. Thankfully, many Nayala live in protected areas and nature reserves that afford them some level of safety and protect their habitat, although poaching does still occur. So although we don't need to worry too much about their numbers, they're still facing many threats from humans. 
The plain zebra is native to eastern and southern Africa, preferring to live in easy reach of water sources on the savannah, which is where our giant lake comes in handy again. The species is divided into six subspecies, separated due to different features, usually varying strip patterns and lack of interbreeding between groups. In fact, zebras recognize each other by their different stripe patterns. Zebras sleep standing up and take watches during sleep to look out for predators, like they're in the military. The reason for a zebra's stripes is still debated. It may be for camouflage in grass and shade, especially for the foals, or it could be for motion camouflage to confuse predators when the herd runs. Equally, it could be a deterrent to parasites or for social recognition, so we really don't know why they have their stripes. Zebra females in a harem are aggressive towards new females, who must be protected by the stallion until tension subsides, so they don't like new females coming in. Zebra herds move to follow the rain, and may migrate up to a thousand miles to remain close to food and water, which is really clever that they follow the rain. Unfortunately, while the species population is stable, it's still classified as near threatened. Excessive hunting has pushed one subspecies of plain zebra to extinction. This remains a problem for others, all of which are desirable to hunters for their skins. The zebra also rely on migration paths, which have been known to become blocked by man-made fences and walls, preventing them from reaching areas with food and water during the dry season. Many zebra live within national parks where they're protected, but they are a far-ranging species and may move out of protected areas during migrations. When in national parks, there are concerted efforts to prevent poaching, but unfortunately these guys remain very at risk because of human activity. And now we've successfully gotten eight species into this habitat. I think that's probably enough for this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It really helps the channel out. And I'll see you in the next one.